Good afternoon, friends. Today is uh, the 13th of July in this 2020 year of our Lord. It's been a pretty warm day for, uh, for me. I was outside during the morning, uh, had a round of golf, did not do well, but nonetheless, there's always in, the, in, in golf, which was invented by Satan, I'm sure, uh, there's always a hole or one uh, or two shots that brings you back. So I uh, will not give up on it and uh, go out and I enjoy that uh, just for the sake of fellowship with uh, the guys I play with and just to be able to get out and get some fresh air and enjoy myself. So today I'd like to focus on uh, the Word of God, the Gospel, Bible study. Uh, those three uh, have a connection and a common ground in God's Word. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Psalm 119. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, and now I keep your word. You are good, and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold or silver. The word of the Lord. From our book of definitions, crazy talk and not so stuffy dictionary of theological terms, gospel, the message about Jesus' death and resurrection, which is always good and always new, and thus mo most people are bored by it. <clears throat> there was a street preacher hanging out on the corner, getting his scream on about how the world had already reached medium well done and was about to be completely overcooked in a fiery ending. People on the sidewalks avoided him by walking in the street. The street people avoided him by sleeping in the street. And the preacher ended his jalapeno-induced rant <clears throat> by declaring, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, back off there, Emerald. You tell people that the world is going to get deep fried like a New Orleans beignet, and you say, that's the gospel? A little basic Bible learning may help here. The word gospel actually means good news. It comes from the Greek word uh, evangelion, which in turn is a compound word made out of the Greek word parts you meaning good as in euphemism, a nice way of saying something unpleasant, and angelia, which means message, as in, well, a message. Our English term evangelical and evangelism are related to this word. The gospel message is good news. More specifically, it is a specific good news the news that Jesus Christ was crucified, died, and buried, and raised for you. And this is a good thing, which is why, even though the scare tactic employed by certain testosterone-juiced hell and damnation preachers may sometimes be effective, after all, Jesus died to forgive our sins, they are inappropriate. So what is the good news? Two different Bible passages summarize the good news. Memorize these and you'll never regret it. One, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 And two, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19. The gospel is both a particular message and a particular way of delivering a message. About the message, 
The basic message of the gospel is that God has acted decisively and permanently in Jesus. The gospel isn't something that tells us that we have to do something. It tells us what God has done for us. People are always trying to mess with the gospel by adding conditions to it. They like to say stuff like, God helps those who help themselves. This messing with the gospel garbage turns us into the, one who, you know, the ones who do stuff. For example, help ourselves. The gospel is good news because God is the one who acts. God is the one who helps us. And above, about the way of delivering the message, because the gospel is good news, it can only be delivered in ways that the audience will hear it as good news. In the history of the church, sometimes sadly misled Christians baptized or converted people by force. Or during the civil rights conflict in America, so-called Christians burned crosses as messages of hate. This is not gospel. The gospel or good news requires speech and behavior that leads to the message of Jesus being heard as good news. Martin Luther Reflecting on a verse from Psalm 17, 117, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you people. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. This is a short psalm. Easy it is, doubtless made this way, so that everyone may pay more attention to it and remember better what it said. No one can complain about the length or content, which much less about the sharpness, difficulty, or profundity of the words. Here we find only short, precise, clear, and ordinary words which everyone can understand, if he will only pay attention and think about them. All God's words demand this. We must not skim over them and imagine we have thoroughly understood them like the frivolous, smug, and bored souls do. When they hear some word of God once, they consider it old hat and cast about for something new. This is a dangerous disease, a clever and malicious trick of the devil. Thus he makes people bold, smug, forward and ready for every kind of era and schism. All this, as I see it, is the result of reading and listening to God's Word carelessly instead of concentrating on it with fear, humility, and diligence. I have often felt this particular devil and temptation myself, but I dare not say in my heart the Lord's Prayer is worn out. You need the ten, you know the Ten Commandments. You can recite the Creed. I study them daily and remind and remain a pupil of the Catechism. I feel too that this helps me a lot, and I am convinced by experience that God's Word can never be entirely mastered, but that Psalm 147 speaks truly. His understanding is beyond measure. Or Ecclesiasticus, who drinks of me shall thirst even more after me. And let us pray. Lord, you bless us in many a way. You gift us with your word, with many words that comprise the good news. The good news that you are indeed a God who has done for us what we could never imagine doing for ourselves. You have gifted your Christ, your word in flesh, and we thank you for the gift of his salvation, the work that he accomplished on our behalf that we might be entertained by you in your kingdom with your loving presence, with your mercy, 
with your compassion and understanding of our frailty and our failings. Lord God, I thank you for the gift of my life. And I thank you that in that life you have planted your word as good seed, cast, I pray, in a fertile ground that will look at those words faithfully, will review those in the context of my living of this day, in this time, in this place. And they will shape and inform my actions and my feelings and my direction, hopefully in the direction of your ways. We pray that your word will become clear to us when we read it, when we hear it, when we focus upon it. Clear and help us to understand the gravity of clinging to you and your ways. O oh Lord, we pray this day for our world, a community of peoples created all in your image, conflicted by so much these days. We ask your healing presence of this troubled world, that we might have confidence that you are with us through ever whatever may come our way. Heal those that still suffer from COVID-19, from various viruses and diseases that afflict the human race. We pray, O oh Lord, your care and attention to those that work within this troubled world as well that they might be safe and protected from harm's way. And keep us, O oh Lord, steadfast in our faith, in our love for you and each other. For we ask all of this in the name of Christ, who has taught us that we might pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.